And I got to ask you about Donald Trump, you know, assassination of Trump. How do you feel about that? In Rio, I've seen people shot up close and personal like that. When the bullet hit him, it's a, see, they keep talking about this powerful rifle, a 223-556 NATO shot out of an M4 carbine. They want to call it AR, and by the way, that stands for Armalite, and the 15 comes from, it was the 15th patented Armalite design, not assault rifle. An assault rifle is a machine gun, not a semi-auto weapon. So it's 22 caliber. You literally can buy conversion units where you can shoot 22 rimfire ammo out of the same barrel that you shoot the regular ammo. It's a light bullet. It kicks off out of the 16-inch barrel weapon that the uh, would-be assassin had, and it's traveling at 130, 140 yards where Trump was relative to the shooter. It's traveling at around 26, 2700 feet per second. It is going twice the speed of sound. And when it hits somebody, it sets up a shock wave. And what it tends to do since the body is 97, 98% water, it causes a puff, white puff of moisture before the capillaries get a chance to react and throw out blood. Now, the ear is not possessed of a great deal of blood. That's why when you get an ear piercing, you don't bleed all over the place. So when you saw the first one, you can see him, and there's a mist. Now, that supersonic bullet sends a shock wave and the effect of the impact on the person that's shot or gla grazed by the bullet is like a boxer hit him bam right in the side of the head if that's where it hits it you can see him drop to the ground and you can see the video with him doing typical expression like somebody got hit hard and then he stands up, and you don't expect to see blood all over the place because it's an earlobe, all right? He stands up, and he's saying, according to the popular press, fight, fight. I can read lips a little bit, studied it. He's saying, fuck you. In other words, he's got the power fist. He doesn't know if they've taken the sniper down enough or not, and he's going, fuck you. I'm here. That's what he seems to be saying, and that's badass. That's some real John Wayne stuff, you know, for real, no play. As far as he knows, he's being shot at. That's the kind of thing you seek in somebody in a military unit who's willing to stand up in the face of fire and not try to duck and hard, but hide, but will go for it. Remember, you got all the Secret Service, mostly the women over there hanging off of him who weren't big enough, strong enough to keep him down. And that was real. The other thing is, it was an abject failure. Some people say it was a setup, but the problem is, is people don't shoot that well. And he's lucky because if you look at the reconstruction on this thing, on animation, if you see the profile vertical plan view of his head, when he's looking at the screen, if he'd still been looking at the screen, he'd be dead. The bullet flight goes one, two, and it hits him on the ear rather than right here if going through his head. The other thing that advantages him is there is a roadway that's perpendicular to the stands he's in when he's talking. Generally, in my experience, what happens is when you have such a depression, a cut, or a roadway, even if there are people in it, you get a breeze moving down it when you get a hot climate situation. So there seems to have been a breeze moving from his left to right, which caused the bullet to drift a little bit to the right, which helped him out. He moves his head and instead of getting it there the slight drift over the 130 yards, which is not much, maybe half an inch, quarter of an inch, but it's just enough to save him. So he's damn lucky. Now, the problem with this is that you draw down his regular 
Secret Service detail because Jill Biden has got what I call a tea party function going. So instead of telling her, no, this isn't just a candidate, this is a former president in the United States, and he's a resource from what he knows, the secret he knows, somebody may want to consult with him just on business of operating that office. You have to postpone what you're doing. They've got a buildup because they've got all these people from the UN function in New York that they're responsible for guarding. So they draw down further. They were aware of him 50 plus minutes before the shooting occurred. He's on a bicycle and the rule is no bicycles. He's got a backpack. The rule is no backpack. He's got a range finder. What the hell are you doing? That's not condemning, but it's something to check out. So why did they even let their protectee take the stand before or the podium before they go check this guy out? They've got a call 10 minutes before they're taking pictures of this guy. He's got this ladder he's put up. Nobody is saying, Mr. Trump, you can't go out there right now until we clear something. He's out there, and three minutes before it happens, not Secret Service, but the local police counter-sniper team has said, hey, we've got somebody out here. Is he one of us? This guy's prone with a rifle. Who is he? Now, why don't they just shoot him? Well, they can't, because what may happen is you have local sheriff's department, one or two local police departments, other federal agencies, secret service. They may make a call to local agencies. Somebody on the SWAT team is said, get down here. We're, we've got a manpower shortage. This guy's in civilian clothes. He just gets his equipment. So is this one of us or is this a bad guy? Get back with us. Who is it? So they're making continuous calls for three minutes and nobody responds and nobody says, Mr. Trump, please excuse us. There is an emergency situation. Could you step down, stand down for a little bit, stand by while we uh, check this out? Nobody did that. And then after the shooting, what happens is just an absolute damn disgrace. Do they get him in with practiced ease? No. It fumbles and fumbles and fumbles. It took him forever to get out of there. Instead of the guy sliding in under the driver's uh, wheel in the front on the left and the guy getting in on the right, riding shotgun, getting the president in the middle, one person sitting on each side, and the guy getting in the tail uh of the SUV where he's got a a flip up window so he can be tail guard. They sit there F around, F around, and it took them to ever to get out of there. Now I have been in the law office where the firm represented a vice president of the United States. The office represented a candidate for president of the United States. Uh, There have been presidential candidates came through Memphis that doing what I did, I got VIP invitations to go check out, and I know how the Secret Service is when they are around somebody, and when they got to clear something out, they do it. (laughs) Chop, chop, you know, and then here it is, clumsy thing, and then we find out that the person in charge from Philadelphia had never done this before. You don't even have Secret Service personnel that they're relying upon, and there's others in the generic Homeland Security Department. What the hell is this? So what do we have? Recently, you got FDR got bullets put through his jacket or coat twice by a would-be assassin. Somebody tried to assassinate uh, Harry Truman. You got a situation where somebody did assassinate John F. Kennedy, Somebody assassinated Robert Kennedy running for president, not a president. Somebody paralyzed uh, George Wallace running for vice president. Somebody tried to take out Jerry Ford unsuccessfully when he was president. Somebody shot Ronald Reagan when he was president. And you got all of this stuff going in here and some fool doesn't take this seriously. And you've got all of this animosity and this hatred going on, not just with somebody who's a political opponent. I've seen folk and family want to punch each other out because they are on opposite sides of who's supposed to go deal with the Baba Yaga, the boogeyman Trump, or somebody supposed to deal with St. Biden 
or evil trailer park trash Biden, you know, depending upon who you're looking at. And all that ramp up over five, six years out there in the streets over BLM, where Trump was trying to send the National Guard up to Milwaukee and the governor didn't want him there, but he sent him anyway. And Kamala Harris is talking about bail the rioters out of jail. She's raising bail money for him. You know, you get all of this hate going on back and forth and it influences the weak minded. So you got a mess and then you say, oh, we can skimp on the security. And much as these folk hate this man, some of these folk with all of these passions, we can just let some rookies come in here who have never done this before, tag this together. And he almost got shot. Now, if he had gotten not almost shot, if he had gotten fatally injured, Oh my God, we made a mess up, but thank God we are rid of him. You see, you have celebrities joking or seriously quipping. They shouldn't have missed. Damn, he should have practiced more so he didn't miss. See, you have this kind of thing on both sides. So, I mean, it's like, and you leave this guy unguarded and then don't forget the other folk. Uh, What's her name? Was it Pelosi's husband that got hammered? You know, they didn't guard him. And then the guy at the baseball field, baseball game that got whacked, you know, they didn't deal with that either. So what's going on, Secret Service? Oh, you got a DEI appointment for director and assistant director. And they don't know what they're doing. And uh, finally... The director did do the dignity to the office of resigning, but I mean, how can you excuse that? And then you come in, Congress has subpoenaed you there, you had a week, somebody said, how many shell casings were found? We don't know, we're waiting on the FBI report. What, didn't you ask? What happened? How many people got called? How many times? Well, we don't know the FBI is doing a report. So you didn't take it upon yourself now that you got this subpoena to go do. That was a disgrace. But, and then the other thing that I'm laughing about, have you heard Vance when he talks? Vance is a much better speaker than Trump. And Vance has been getting all over Kamala. And he's saying he regrets that he doesn't get to debate her. But see, Trump's not an orator. He repeats himself, but he doesn't go around in a circle like Kamala. And Trump has a unique thing. I noticed this from trying jury cases. Why did you repeat it? Because I wanted it to stay in the mind of the juror or in the mind of the jury. See, I noticed this doing public speaking. You can say something and people will come up to you afterwards. I really love that point you're making. Okay, thanks. I guess they liked it. But they'll also say, I really love that point you made about such and such. And you look at the guy with you. You say, I didn't say that. Let's listen to the tape. And you listen to the tape. You didn't say that. But they heard you say it because they wanted you to say it. And if you say certain key words and phrases, they'll take on flights of imagination where you said just exactly what they wanted to hear, but you only said four words. Not a long, it was really, you went on at great length about that point. I was so glad to hear somebody that understands, and you haven't said but five words about it. See, people have false memories. It's about human nature. So Trump talks in a way that appeals to his audience who thinks he's one of us. He's filthy rich, but he's one of us. He doesn't use these big words. He talks like one of us drinking a beer in the roadhouse or hanging out with the guys. So when he says, it's just awful, it's deplorable, it's just deplorable what they've done, they need to do something, it's just awful about these lies. See, they hear that. And for them, he's telling them something they want to hear. And then there's this old thing about propaganda. 
about lies. Tell a lie long enough and loud enough and you can get anyone, including the liar, to believe it. Tell something that's not necessarily a lie to somebody who wants to hear what you have to say just a few times and damn well they would have heard it and say, that's my hero. He said exactly what I wanted to hear. You see, there's a method to this madness. So when the pundits who are wordsmiths who can use the big vocabularies when they write the articles for the newspapers and the magazines and for talking points for the talking heads on CNN and MSNBC. They use their big words and they look down on it. What they don't realize is that what Trump is doing is talking in sound bites. They're trying to write all this stuff out and they don't realize he's doing the same damn thing they have their announcer on CNN does when he tries to give you a 10-second or 15-second soundbite that's supposed to explain something that somebody spent five years going to school and grad school to learn and has read 35 books on. See, the soundbite is what the American public is used to now. You're supposed to say whatever it is, however complicated, in 10 to 15 seconds. So that's how Trump talks, and he repeats the quip, the soundbite, so it sinks in. You don't miss it. And you can look down on him, but the audience he's addressing gets it. 